distinguished delegates, I invite the committee to continue its consideration of agenda item 27 entitled Social Development, such items A and B. Distinguished delegates, before we begin our general discussion on item on the item, I would like to remind delegations of the time limit of five minutes for individual delegations. To assist the speakers in managing their time, a digital speech timer was installed, which is visible on the large screens in the room. The microphones will be automatically switched off when the time is up. Now I give the floor to His Excellency, Chargé d'Affaires d'Utre. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Distinguished colleagues, I wish to congratulate you and the other members of the Bureau on your elections, and I want to assure you of my delegation's fullest support in the conduct of our work at the third committee. I would like to thank the Secretary General for his report under this agenda item. Eritrea associates itself with the statements made on behalf of the African Group and the Group of 77 in China under this agenda item. Mr. Chair. Poverty, youth unemployment, and social exclusion continue to pose serious challenges in many developing countries, especially in Africa. The gains in social development that the continent made in the initial decades has lost some momentum and in many cases regressed. The modest economic growth registered in some African states is often not evenly enjoyed by all citizens and in some cases comes at the cost of certain sectors of the society. In this regard, it is important to note that social crisis and the pressure to include those who are left behind is one of the main causes of civil strife and state collapse. As we embark in the implementation of the Agenda 2030, there is a need to rethink the tools and policies taken at national and international levels. We need to address the obstacles that impede nations from achieving their socio-economic aspirations including the role of international financial and trade systems and unjustified political pressures. There is also a need to find durable solution for peace. We cannot continue to turn our eyes from the clear intractability between conflict and development. Equally important, there is a need to genuinely respect the right of nations to chart their own social, economic, and political path. Chair, Eritrea's nation-building strategy is geared towards achieving rapid balance, homegrown, and sustainable economic growth with social equity and justice at its core. Eritrea's vision is building a just, prosperous, and harmonious nation. Eritrea's approach is anchored on the principle of self-reliance, equitable distribution of development, and popular participation at all levels and at all stages of decision-making. In the past decades, Sizable investment has been made to bridge the development gap in various parts of the country with emphasis on lifting up those who have been historically disadvantaged, including women, the poor, children, rural communities, and the disabled. Expanded access to quality social infrastructure, as it, such as education, health, clean drinking water, and food security continue to be the main preoccupation of the government. Notwithstanding the meager national resources, difficult regional situation, and external hostilities, improving the quality of life for all citizens remains the main trust of the government's efforts in Eritrea. To mention a few, one, Eritrea is among the very few countries in the African region that achieved all the health-related million developed goals. Two, free education is provided from kindergarten to university level. Three, increasing food production and ensuring availability of food remains a major priority for Eritrea. As a country situated in a region that faces recurrent drought and famine, the challenges of achieving this objective cannot be understated. A decade ago, the government embarked on a major water and soil conservation scheme building over 300 dams of different sizes. Eritrea is now on track to achieve food security by expanding irrigated farming which allows the country to harvest up to three to four times per year. Additionally, nutrition intake is improving due to increased food production and availability of a variety of cereals, fruits, and vegetables. Four, the government continues to provide the social safety nets. One of the legacies of the decades long war of independence is the presence of thousands of four disabled veterans and families of martyrs. The government continues to make over $20 million in direct payment to families of fallen heroes. 
The government is also closely working with the Eritrean World Disabled Association to eliminate social stigma and ensure access to medical care, technical and skills training, as well as active participation in the decision making. Chair, the government has recognized that a policy based on achieving social justice doesn't only contribute to social cohesion and political stability, but it is the strongest foundation to sustainable development. It is only when every citizen has unleashed his or her full potential that sustainable development can be achieved. While we recognize the Moore's achievement in areas of social development, we are mindful of the fact that more investment is required to consolidate the gains made and accelerate the socio-economic development. So <laughs> active participation of Eritreans both inside the country and in the I thank Eritrea and now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Sri Lanka.